Hello. In my video yesterday, I did say that I didn't intend being systematic about um, these and that I won't do each movement of each sonatas in detail. Um, I want, however, to say something about the second movement. Uh, it's an interesting one, although it's very short. Um, I've got some ideas that I would like to try and to make come across of things that I have not necessarily heard very many people do. So I just thought it might be worth trying to explain what it is. I'll just play the first few lines and then we can go over it. thing to talk about, uh, and that's uh, quite usual, is the tempo. And that is odd because this is marked as a prestissimo, uh, which is really as fast as Beethoven ever writes a uh, tempo indication. I mean, the last prestissimo I do remember in his sonata is actually the very first one. That is a prestissimo. I I can't, uh, I'm probably wrong, but I can't think of anyone in any of the others so far. Uh, it's in 6-8. And I mean, uh, the tempo I take instinctively is the one I've just played at. Seems natural to me. It's not so far. If anything, it's a little bit faster. Again, what Shannon much less say, which is 160. It's about that. Um, the interesting thing about this is that the last time there is, again, a 6-8 uh, fast speed in Beethoven, he writes it as a presto, and that is the last movement of the, um, the quail sonata. Uh, and immediately it's easy to see that this is much faster so why did he write presto, something which is clearly faster than the prestissimo he has written here uh, and not the other way around? Difficult to give a clear answer to that. Um, what is certain and what limits us in the speed is that the texture is very much thicker in that piece. Uh, a lot is written in almost quartet-like uh, part writing, which is not at all the case of this. Is very pianistic, but when you do a... you really have your four parts working together and the harmony changes all the time. It is much more much more fluid in some ways. Uh, where here you stay with a block. Here every half bar so you can't go as fast. I think what happens with that speed and to give the feeling of the prestissimo is almost to feel that you are really playing all the six quavers of the bar with an intention, for example. <laughs> that every single quaver matters. Uh, and so that you get this very relentless beat and it sort of gives the character of the prestissimo if the speed can't be as fast. So, uh, <laughs> now I'm sure I'm not the first one to remark it, but uh, it's also strange to have this rhythm of the Turkish march on the left hand. compare it to traditional Turkish march, then this is much faster. So maybe that's a clue for the prestissimo again. For this type of piece, it is indeed a very fast one. 
then there is something which again is of great deal of interest in this section. <laughs> Which again I don't see observed all that much is that two bars are without phrasing therefore I think non legato and two bars with a single slur absolutely legato so you get this contrast between and non legato again legato now I think that's a very nice thing to do and uh, it seems to be ignored a lot of the time. The other thing is that uh, the least interesting voice, the only one which doesn't move at all, is the bass, which runs B for a line and a half. Uh, but in itself, it's interesting because if you do mark it a little bit, then you get this huge tension of the fact that the B is not released until the very, very end. <laughs> I think it is worth not downplaying that B. Uh, make it as insistent as I think it should be. And then we get something which is quite dark suddenly. And now this is interesting because in this he puts un poco espressivo. A tempo, which means clearly that for him, un poco espressivo means do take your time over that, and indeed the harmony is so dense that we have to take time if we want to get any juice out of it, so to speak. Then again, we have the same thing two bars non legato, two bars where the right hand has a slur, two bars non legato. And again, I think it's worth doing in this difficult pianistic lead. And then I think terribly important in this movement is playing non legato as much as possible, the left hand. So a few things to notice here uh, about the way the piece is built really. Um, this now the way this work is it's almost cinematographic in effect so you have this then the camera retreats and then it zooms an incredible speed and then we are in full swing again here now just a little almost a tip in interpretation when you have those repeated chords, repeated octave, can be quite ugly. You have to play them so that the second beat is weaker, so not. And that gives them what they need to feel like a musical phrase and not somebody tuning the piano. Uh. Now this is it's difficult to understand what's going on when we hear it first. It's simply a canon using the uh, the rhythm of the Turkish march that we get at the beginning. It's the way the music all dissolves, really. Uh, 
phrases become shorter and shorter and shorter until they are just two notes. And that's interesting, it's a play on the mirror of is strange and we are used to it and it doesn't surprise us very much but there is nothing when we are here to tell us that this is going to happen we are sort of waiting for a B minor chord of some sort some sort and this is not at all what comes we pianistic tip again uh, not really a tip a musical sort of tip if you want the sound is going to feel harsh and brutal if in the treatment of this we give too much emphasis on the long notes at the detriment of the quavers so if I do it, I exaggerate but it, if, however, you decide to treat your quavers melodically as well as the uh, crotchets, then you get... And then on the left hand... And all too often we hear... Something like that... It's a fairly straightforward recap, which doesn't need to need much talking about, except that this is so nice. Yeah, and again, he writes the expressivo here. But from here onwards, absolutely attentive. going down at the end I think almost spinning up I think a schnabel in his edition puts a slightly higher metronome mark for the last record and it's kind of good and that's it <laughs>